In the previous tutorial videos, we show you how you can uh, apply the three different logical operators, namely negation, conjunction, and disjunction in some simple cases, especially when you actually have a specific problem to solve, you want to make sure you choose the right um, logical operator. Okay, if you're not confident enough about these, please rewatch the video in the previous ones. And now we're gonna uh, go one step further. The reason that we are teaching you about uh, Boolean literals, about relational operations, and how to combine relational operations using logical operator, simply because we want to build something that can be more complicated for your programs, and so we can handle more interesting problem. Okay, so now I'm gonna have a series of examples to show you, but let's focus one at a time. So what we want to show you now is a new construct for a control structure called if statements or, select, uh, or selection or conditional. Okay, so what we want to do is let's create a new class over here. Okay, right click on your projects and say new, and then we can say class. Okay, so now we can say if statements. Okay, if statements. I would say app, so we should mean some application. If statements app, one. Okay, we're gonna do quite a few uh, in the in later videos as well. So let's start with number one, the simplest one possible. Okay, and choose the main method to be generated, and then we say finish. Okay, let's maximize the uh, tab, uh, the class over here in the editor. So now let's try. Okay, let's first of all, let me just say scanner, okay, and make sure the scanner is defined so we can read uh, user's input. And then over here, I'll say system.in so I can read from the keyboard. And then at the end, so input.close over here. So let's now do something very simple, just to illustrate the simplest syntax you can do for the if statements. Let's say we want to calculate the absolute value for any integer value. Okay, The absolute value for a positive number will be positive just itself. But the absolute value for a negative number will be to apply the negative sign to it. Okay, So now the problem is... We want to calculate, okay, you can say read from the user and integer and return the absolute value, okay, of that input uh, integer. Okay, let's see this. So system that out dot print line, okay, we can say enter an integer, okay, over here, and it can be positive, zero, or it can be negative, okay. So now let's say integer i is assigned to uh, input dot next int over here. Okay, that's whatever uh, the user int enter from the keyboard. And now what we want to say is if i happens to be negative, then we have to somehow apply a negative sign for the absolute value, right? So now just for convenience, I'm gonna program in one way. You can feel free to try other way to see if that works, okay? I'll say integer abs for absolute value, let's say I assume it's always just going to be i to begin with. In the case where i happens to be negative, I have to change absolute value to be minus i, okay? Otherwise, I don't need to change it. So you can see it's more like a conditional statement over here. In the case where i is negative, I have to do something additional. In the case where i is simply non-negative, I, I don't need to do anything extra. Okay, so this is kind of a selection you have to do. Okay, selectively, I would say if. So this is a new keyword you have to learn for the if statements. The first keyword. You only, there are only two keywords you need. Well, the, the only one for this video is if. Uh, so you start with if, and then make sure you have a pair of uh, round parentheses. So in between the opening and closing parentheses, you have to specify a Boolean condition. Okay, a Boolean condition can be made of any of the Boolean literal or relational expressions or logical operations that we t taught you in the previous video. That is why we spend so much time to prepare you to be ready for if statements. Okay, so now I can say if i is simply strictly less than zero, okay, I'm gonna trace the program together with you, don't worry, and make sure uh, the if statements has a starting uh, curly brackets, also has an ending curly brackets as well, otherwise you wouldn't compile, okay? So now we want to say if i is less than zero, in this case, what I want to do is I want to say absolute value. So there are two ways for you to do this, okay? You can either say, uh, of course, you don't declare absolute value again because it has been declared. You can either say absolute value abs is assigned to minus i. This will work, okay? Because for example, if the user enter minus two, for example, over here, and this i here will be minus two, and abs will be minus two. 
and then we say ABS will be minus minus two, which will be positive two. Okay, that's one way to do it. Let me show you the more interesting way. If I say ABS is assigned to ABS itself, multiply minus one, I claim that this code here is equivalence. Okay, I will trace that uh, together with you. Okay, and then over here, that means, okay, if I, the idea is, I will only try to execute this particular operation selectively, only under the circumstance where i is strictly less than zero. Otherwise, I don't have to change abs. It's simply just i, okay? Because i is not negative, okay? So what I will do now is, after this, I can simply in system that l dot print line, okay? I can say the absolute value for, okay? And over here, I can say i is, okay? And then here, I can say abs. Okay, let's try it out, okay? So now basically there are two possible execution paths at a runtime. Either we execute this block of code, or actually either we execute this block of code if i is negative, or we don't execute it where the absolute value would just be i itself, either way. Okay, so what we'll do is let's try it out and then I'll trace the code together with you. Okay, so what I will do is I will right click on if statements app one, and then I'll say run as Java application. Okay, enter an integer. For example, in the case where i is three, okay? The absolute value for three is three. Okay, let me execute again. If I say zero over here, you will say the absolute value for zero is zero. Let's try another one. If I say the absolute value for minus five is five, okay? It seems like the program is correct, but let's trace it together so you can also understand the meaning uh, of if statement, so you can actually predict the behavior by yourself. Okay, so now what I will do is let me maximize this. What I will do is I'm going to, uh, okay, remember that there are two possible ways to do it, but I'm just showing you the second way. Okay, you can try the other way as well. What I will do is I'm going to have a snapshot of this particular program over here, and then we'll trace it together on my iPad. Okay, let me snapshot and let me switch to my iPad over here and let's paste it okay okay let's go into react from the uh, uh, computer let's just wait a bit okay it should be ready so now let's paste it okay this is our absolute value program over here so we're gonna try different programs okay let's try test one test two and test three okay let's try different ones so what I would do is, let me just write it out, the test we're gonna write, run. So we got test one, in which case we're gonna give maybe five, okay? And then we got test two, in which case we'll give zero. And then we got test three, and we got minus three, for example, okay? And then we're going to see how they work together. Uh, each one of them will be a separate run. And then we'll see how they produce the expected result, okay? So what we'll do is, let's try one by one. For the first one, I'm gonna use uh, green. Okay, so now for five over here. So now that means when we uh, we prompt the user and then when we try to execute this line over here, we know that over here it is going to, uh, the user is going to enter five, right? And then uh, five, that means five is going to be stored for i, right? And then the absolute value over here is going to store the current value for i which is five so that means absolute value is also five so at the moment absolute value seems to be okay so now let's try to see what happens when we try to evaluate this if statements over here that means we're going to evaluate this particular condition over here in this case i is actually five so now five less than zero is going to give us false Okay, false, I put F, F over here for false. False simply means we are not going to execute what, whatever it is inside the if branch. We're simply going to skip it, okay? And then after that, we're going to execute this line of code, okay? So that means the absolute value for i, in which case it is five, is abs, absolute value, which is five, okay? Let me highlight the execution path for you. You can think about what, what we have just done. Is this particular path, okay? We started with this line over here, we execute it, 
and then we execute this line as well and then we execute this line as well and we also execute only this line over here to evaluate to see if the condition for if is true or false in that case it is false that means we don't execute uh, the line within the if branch so this this block of code is simply just not executed just not executed okay and then that means we're going to bypass that and then we're going to execute this line so this is the execution path for test one okay let's now try another one over here so let me just try another one okay let me just make another one okay make it a little bit smaller otherwise i don't have space for the other two tests this one should be big enough okay so now let's try test two for test two let me use blue so now for test two i'm going to use zero okay it's going to be very similar okay so now i'm going to be a little bit faster here so we execute this line here okay enter integer so now when we enter uh zero over here that means i will be zero in this case to be stored and then the absolute value will just be zero always and absolute value will be zero okay and now we always going to evaluate the condition first to decide whether we should go inside the code within the curly brackets for the if so now zero less than zero over here should be false so that means we're going to bypass this block block of code we simply don't execute it and that means we're going to execute this block of code the absolute value for i in which case it is zero is absolute value which we just store over here so it has has not been changed so that will just be zero okay and the execution path will be the same as the case for five okay so that means we execute this line uh, over here and then we execute this line we execute this line we execute to evaluate this condition over here in which case it is false that means we bypass uh the what's inside the branch of the code and then we execute the outside the if okay that's what we have okay hopefully you understand these two cases let's try another one over here let's just uh try the last case which will be a little bit different okay, okay. Let me just uh, maximize. Okay, sorry, that's a bit small, but hopefully it's still visible for you. So now for this, I'm going to use red to show you. We're going to use minus three. Okay, again, enter an integer. And now in this case, we're going to enter minus three. Okay, minus three. And i is going to be minus three. And then i here is minus three. That means that abs is temporarily stored as minus three. Okay. So now if i is less than zero i is minus three now minus three less than zero is going to evaluate to true right so this is going to be true so now true which is different from the previous two cases right the, in the previous two cases simply false if it is true that means we're going to execute every line of code that's within the curly brackets over here okay that means we're going to execute this line that's the only line okay now let's see how we can analyze this execution over here so now we are trying to do a reassignment for the variable abs at the moment abs is simply just minus three at the moment right so now right hand side abs is minus three minus three multiply minus one is going to give us three and then we store three back to this particular variable which is three okay so now think it this way basically what we're doing is after this line abs is storing minus three and after this line over here we are replacing this by three itself okay so now when we try to execute this line over here the absolute the absolute value for i in this case i is still minus three is abs in this case it would be three let's see how the execution path looks like in this case what you will have is we execute this line over here enter integer and also we uh, execute this line here and then we execute this line here and then we also execute this line to evaluate the condition so far so good so far it's the same as the other two tests that we just performed but now because for this particular case the condition evaluate to simply true because minus three evaluates to simply true because minus three less than zero is actually true that means we also have to execute this line here that's the extra stuff we have to do in the case where the if statement condition is actually true and then outside the if we always also have to do this so you can think about this think it this way 
So this line over here is conditional. It's conditional execution, which means we only execute it if the corresponding condition over here is true. The other lines, all the three lines over here, and also this line over here, they are not under any if uh, branch. So these are unconditional. Unconditional uh, execution. Okay, so that would be the simplest uh, if statement you can actually write for your Java program. So basically you have start with some if, some Boolean condition over here, have curly brackets, and then you put some stuff over here. So that's conditional execution, especially for this block of code, it's simply just conditional, only if this part over here is true. Okay, that's about this particular minimum uh, if statement you can write. So in the later video, we'll make it a little bit more complicated to solve more interesting problems.